Hello and welcome to United Church of Christ Fort Lauderdale where you are loved and you are welcome. We invite you to come in and join us for worship. It's just about to begin. Welcome to United Church of Christ Fort Lauderdale. I am Reverend Joel Slotnick and I am humbled to serve as the chair of the board and leadership team here at United Church of Christ Fort Lauderdale. Wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Our mission is to develop passionate followers of Christ through the celebration of worship, the excitement of God's word, the blessing of God's healing, the rewards of service, the honoring of God's creation, and the joy of fellowship where all are welcome at God's table. We are a welcoming, open, and affirming church to all people of all races, genders, ages, sexual orientations, professions, previous religious affiliations, nationalities, or mental and physical conditions. i uh -huh. 
Come, all you whose souls thirst for the living God, we come in search of help and hope. Come, you who are acquainted with grief or opposition, we come bearing our doubts, our wounds, and our fears. Come, you who are in need of good news, we come in search of joy, truth, and light. Come and find your refuge in God your rock. Let us again praise the one who is our help and our hope. Let us pray. O oh God, you come to us not in the chaos of the whirlwind, not in the roar of the earthquake, not in the crackling heat of the fire, but in the sound of sheer silence. Quiet our minds, bring truth to our hearts and stillness to our bodies, that we may meet you in that silence. Help us to listen to your still, small voice. Give us the courage to go wherever you lead us, trusting that you will prepare the way. We pray this in the name of our companion on the journey, Jesus the Christ. Our first reading this morning comes from Psalm 86, verses 1 through 10 and 16 and 17. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am devoted to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call on you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my cry of supplication. In the day of my trouble I call on you, for you will answer me. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and bow down before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name, for you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your strength to your servant. Save the child of your serving girl. Show me a sign of your favor, so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame, because you, Lord, have helped and comforted me. The first reading today is from Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 through 39. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they align those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell it in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, rather fear him who can destroy both body and soul. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, yet one, one of them will be fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head, they're all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many, many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I've come to bring peace to the earth. I've not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me, for those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
ask any of the angels up above. Your bad behavior will not get you love. You must be kind to all, not just a few. Just follow these words which are so true. There's a little motto which always gets you through. You be good to others and they'll be good to you. You may pray to guidance like in Sunday school or ask for help in living by the golden rule. You say that life is tit for tat, and that's just the way it is. So you believe in getting back, but why not just forgive? Don't you know that this life leads you to the next? So when you're good to others, you'll be truly blessed. Change your posture, do something quite unique. Don't get mad at others, just turn the other cheek. Try and say some nice things instead of always bad. They'll count it in your favor and then you will be glad. They say that things both large and small will come to them that waits. But I advise you to invest so it appreciates. Let's all work together and not play dirty pool. Try and live forever by the golden rule. So what's the one conclusion this number brings us to? If you're good to others, they'll be good to you. Yeah. The theme that the Holy Spirit chose for our worship experience today is characteristics of being a disciple. The sermon title is Building Character. So character, I've been called a character before, and that's a good thing. But what actions reflect, what actions reflect our Christian character? In the first reading from Psalms 86 today, we hear of an enormous amount of action verbs. As David describes, the characteristics of being a disciple. We hear that we're called to answer, called to preserve, we're called to save, we're called to gladden, we're called to lift, we're called to give, we're called to listen, we're called to bow, we're called to glorify, we're called to turn, we're called to show. We are called to help and we're called to comfort as God's people, which the first reading shares with us. This is who we are. These actions, they're essential to being a disciple of Christ. They're not optional. We can't use the first two on Monday, the second two on Tuesday, take Wednesday off, maybe go to the next two. We're called to be these qualities, these characteristics. If we look back at the Psalm 86, there's so much wisdom. It's filled with so much. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy, expressing the need for humility. Humility. Preserve my life. In other words, may my soul be safe from temptation, and may I know that I am holy, and I am made for holy uses. Preserve my life. 
You are my God. Be gracious to me. Be merciful unto me. And for you, O oh Lord, for to you do I cry all day long. Who do we pray to? Do we pray to God? Or do we pray to some form of humankind or some other source? But do we pray to God? Because who we pray to is who will hear us and who will answer. Lift up my soul. And I love that because I know that the nearer I am to God is the more joy that I will experience. The greater is my joy. For you, O oh Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call on your name. God's goodness flows forth in abundance, we hear, in streams towards those who pray, who, those who worship, and they, those who say God's name. It's good to know that that's how God feels about God's people. Loving and caring and good and forgiving and steadfast love. That's not what I was taught as a teenager. I was taught to fear God, to fear God and love God and come to God over fear of punishment. Well, this is not what the Bible says. I like David's version. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my cry of supplication. That God hears me. Is there any real reason for praying if there's no expectation of the Lord's answering? In my day of trouble, I will call on you, for you will answer me. And when we talk about David, David wasn't a believer in the theory that the world would grow worse and the world would grow darker that the dispensation would wind up with general darkness and idolatry, but David believed in the, that the dwellers in the land would learn to be righteous people. He had faith. He had faith in the people that they would become righteous, that the world would end in darkness. Turn to me. One turn of God's face will turn all darkness into day much faith. I love this song. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame because you, O oh Lord, have helped me and comforted me. How do we react to people? Do we act, react the way that's expected or do we react the way that's unexpected? You're going to get a lot more reaction from the unexpected when our decision is to result to love, to hear, to listen, to show signs of support and comfort. Thank you, David, for those words of wisdom. As God's people, which the first reading shares with us, who are we? Christ was always present with those around him. I was thinking about that the other day. What it means to be present with someone. You know, you may be in conversation, and are you really engaged in that conversation? And I believe Jesus was. I don't merely mean physically. He was present there with their needs, and He was addressing the injustice that they were being served. He cared, He held, He listened, He comforted, and Jesus loved. He gave His life and even died for their freedom and for our freedom. Speaking of freedom, last Friday was Juneteenth, celebrating the emancipation of the slaves in the United States, a celebration of freedom from being oppressed. That topic came up a lot this week, the topic of injustice and freedom from injustice. We were in our weekly meeting with the state conference this week. We had one person who was talking about Racism and mentioned the word echo racism. And I thought, what would, what is echo racism? And she explained to the group of us on the Zoom meeting about the uh, Commission for Racial Justice of the United Church of Christ denomination. That at one point, one local church had noticed that in their town, that the the commercial hazardous waste facilities, they were always being built 
in the areas and the population of where the black people lived. Minorities, people who were being oppressed. They, they watched this and wondered why it was that the church did. And then they commissioned a study because they noticed that people that lived in those areas would become sick more often than other people that didn't have that in their neighborhoods. So they went to the denomination, and the denomination commissioned a study called Toxic Waste and Race. This explains what socioeconomic racism is. And in that study, I'll read to you the first two lines of the study and the major conclusion. The findings of the analytical study on the location of commercial hazardous waste facilities suggest the existence of clear patterns which show that communities with greater minority percentages of the population are more likely to be the sites of such facilities. Racism. Dumping toxic waste in minority neighborhoods. Their study created change. Their study, the local church's actions, their actions of what we hear in the first part of the sermon, of caring, loving, understanding, created change. And that's what the church is called to do. The gospel reading from the book of Matthew also talks about prayer. It was mentioned and talked and spoken about in the Psalm 86, but also in the reading from Matthew chapter 10 today. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Father in heaven, but whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my Father in heaven. Again, is there any real reason for praying if there's no expectation of the Lord answering us? Do we have expectations when we pray? Do not think that I have come to bring peace. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. Not peace, but a sword. Someone mentioned this the other day, and it really struck a note with me. If church doesn't make you uncomfortable, you're in the wrong church. Church should make us think. Church should make us reevaluate. Church should make us reflect on our characteristics and decide if we need to change to be more Jesus-like. In that study about eco-racism, many in a lot of churches would become scared to even get involved in such a political situation. But God called that church to make a difference, and they said yes to it. I like being a part of a church like that. So do we reflect the characteristics of a disciple of Christ? I invite us all to ask ourselves that question and think about it this week. Do we say yes or do we pick and choose our disciple path? Our job as disciples is not to monitor the behavior of others. And we like to do that. Oh, John, he's, this, he's maybe the top four, but the last five, forget it always judging other people, but our job as disciples is not to monitor their behavior, but to live the behavior that we mentioned, we talked about before, to live Jesus' life. It's how we display our own discipleship characteristics that should inspire the same behavior in others. Amen. Let us pray. God of love, mercy, and compassion, Weave your desire for the world into the fabric of our lives. Remove the blinders from our eyes and lift the fear from our hearts so that we may see your vision, a new reign of justice and compassion that will renew the earth. Transform our lives so that we may accomplish your purpose. Anoint us with your spirit of love that we might bring good news to the oppressed. Bind up the brokenhearted and proclaim release to the captive. Surround us with your love, fill us with your grace, and strengthen us for your service. Empower us to respond to the call of Jesus, to open our hearts and release fear and doubt 
to take up our crosses and to follow you. We are your disciples. We pray for those undergoing challenges and difficult times. We call their names out loud now. We now sing the prayer taught to us by your son, Jesus. Father's Day, and we often speak of our God as our Father, and while that's not anatomically correct, uh, it is historically correct. For it was our God who, through the Spirit, empowered a small group of Christians to establish this congregation and build this church. We thank you, our Father, our Father God. With it came the responsibility of maintaining this building and the work that goes on through the dedicated volunteers and staff. We thank you, our Father God, for these Christians. It is now the responsibility and task of all our followers to support by your generous contributions to maintain these programs. I invite you to check our website for the ways you can support us on a weekly, monthly, or even a one-time gift. We thank you for your support, and we say, Happy Father's Day to our God. Thank you.
thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because God's given Jesus Christ the Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because God's given Jesus Christ the Son. Give thanks. Give thanks. At this table, everyone is welcome. At this table, everyone is seen. At this table, everybody matters. No one falls between. At this table, you can say whatever. At this table, you can speak your mind At this table Everything's forgiven There's enough for everyone So come As you are Remember that the door is open open. Yes, come as you are. The perfect gift that you can bring is your heart. So come. Come as you are. judgment. At this table, mercy has a seat. At this table, we're all sons and daughters. There's no place I'd rather be. So come as you are. Remember that the door is always open. Yes, come, come as you are. The perfect gift that you can bring is your heart. So come, come as you are. this table, everybody cares. At this table, everybody matters. So come, come as you are. Communion. We gather together every Sunday to share a meal. So remember, it's this table and what it stands for that connects us. So whether you're here in this sanctuary, or you're at home, or you're on the beach with the tablet, we're all connected through the love of God. Let us be in prayer. Creator God, you made us to be neighbors, members of one family, blessed with great diversity. 
You created us to be helpers and friends to one another, entrusting to us your justice and your joy. Yet we have denied justice and joy to many, creating worlds of poverty, pain, lost opportunities, prejudice, and absence of hope. In so many ways, we break each other's hearts. We hurt and kill one another. Still, you do not reject us. We ask your forgiveness and pray to be transformed. On the night that Jesus was to be betrayed, he sat at the table with the disciples and with friends and family and they shared a meal like this one. But that night, he took the bread and he blessed it. He gave thanks for it, but then he broke it. And he showed it to all of them gathered there, and he said, this is my body, to be broken for you. Those words ring true to us today. And he said to eat and remember him. In the same way, he took the cup, blessed it, said, this is the cup of the new covenant. Whenever you drink of it, remember me. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the grape and the grain. They come from the earth, your creation. We ask your blessing upon both so that they become for us today, at this moment, the very essence and presence of your son, Jesus. We ask your blessings upon this meal. It's in his name we pray. Amen. The table of our Lord is now set. It provides forgiveness, strength, wisdom, compassion, and grace. All is now ready, and all are invited to experience Jesus. So we invite you to take a breath, feel the presence of the Holy Spirit flow through us. So we ask you now to take a cracker, a piece of bread, and just juice, and, and consume along with us. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks from all of our hearts for this meal that you've shared with us today. Help us to remember what it stands for. It stands for love and the ability for all of us to see through all the, the fog and the prejudice and all the things that divide us and helps to remind us of the sacrifice that your son gave for us and for all humanity. Help us to remember that. We thank you and may this meal renew us and refresh us in both body and spirit. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we end today's worship service, I invite you to remember that as we go out into the world, that our hands are God's hands, and our feet are God's feet, and our words are God's words. So we should go out in peace to serve and love the Lord. Amen. <laughs>